wouldn't part of your teachings uh, repetition to be an important thing to achieve or to move towards where repetition? you want to be? Yeah. Yes, but we're going to clarify something. A few minutes ago, we made a statement and the audience rose to it. And we were talking about that feeling when you can feel that your vortex version is about to burst into the manifested scene where you can see it. You can just feel that it's about there. And it's time to step on the gas. But in a moment of despair, don't step on the gas. Don't dig in. Don't demand. So many people have calibrated. It's like this. Since words don't teach, only life experience does. So, for example, let's say that you are asking for something that your mother, someone important to you, doesn't feel that the timing is right for it. Maybe she can't afford it. Maybe she doesn't think you're old enough to do that yet. She has other ideas about it. And so she says no. So you say, please. And she says no. So you start demonstrating your sadness, your disappointment. And she might just cave to it. And if she does, she will teach you contrary to the law of attraction. But then you learn, hmm, I can manipulate my mother. She loves me so much. And if I just pout long enough and refuse to eat, then she'll realize how important it is to me. But what you've also come to believe is that you can get things to work for you without engaging the universal energy that creates worlds. And we know people can make a lot happen by force and bullying and pouting and demanding and that sort of thing. But you're talking about helping the world find abundance. That's big. You're wanting to exercise and engage this universal energy that creates worlds. And you can feel when you're hooked in with it. You can feel when it's pouring through your thought process. You can feel. You can feel when you're rendezvousing just with the right people at the right time. So if somebody initially is not there, and I just mentioned about repetition, I didn't mean such a you know extreme way of repetition. Let's say if you know to take some time for silence or meditation, initially that's difficult for the person because they've never been there so they need to display some type of discipline we'll just tell you what Esther has come to do Esther's in a place of strong empowerment right now because she finally gets it that she can be or do or have anything that she chooses it's been 35 years for her to reach this point of well, she's way out there now so we're just playing a little bit she's known this for a long time but what we're getting at is the processes that she uses every day she makes a short list of things she's going to do and she wrote on the top of her side of the place Matt I'm really going to do these things I'm not just going to make a list and not do them these are the things I'm going to do and sometimes it's only two things but she gets them done and then on the universe's side of the place, Matt, those are the things that she would like to be done that she doesn't have time to do, doesn't know how to do, doesn't have a clue how to do it. In other words, she puts politics there. She put democracy there. She put Gaza there. She put Supreme Court there. Anything that she would like them to find their resources because she doesn't know even what to ask. I don't know, Abraham, what to ask. I don't understand this war. I don't know what to ask for. But you all do. So what I'm going to do is take my resistance out of the equation by handing it off to you. And so as she hands things off to the universe that she couldn't in a million years figure out how to do anyway. She's getting lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter so that the things she is choosing for herself just come in easily. So is there such a thing as positive resistance and not always a negative resistance? Just like the repetitions. I, I know this is important, well, but I'm not there yet, so I need to little push. There's allowing and resistance. Leave it there. I'm sorry, say that again? There is allowing, I'm allowing this thing I want, or I'm not. If they don't know how to get there initially, how would you get there? Like unconsciously incompetent. 
Well, so needs to show them a little bit of way. What we're trying to help you to feel is that there are so many things about your physical world that you don't know how to do. You don't know how to keep your earth spinning in its orbit. You don't understand the proximity of this planet to others. You don't understand how the water moves around. You don't understand why there is always food on this planet and enough. It gets bogged down in distribution, but there is enough food. It's not being trucked in from other planets. You don't understand that. You don't understand how to make it happen, but you could acknowledge that it is happening. And so you don't understand electricity. Not one of you understands electricity. Not one of you. You know how to flip the switch. You know how to get the light on and how to get the light off with relative ease things are getting a little more complicated with that all the time but you don't understand electricity and that's about flow and resistance and flow and resistance and so is that a negative thing? but can't you feel your devil's advocate resistant point of view going on here in this conversation why aren't you asking us how it works instead of trying to point out why it doesn't I'm looking more of a universal laws like the airplane Initially, it needs resistance. Once you're up there, it's less resistance. It's not like I'm resisting myself. It's my eagerness to know. Comparing it with universal laws. Well, maybe you need to start with something easier. Because we don't think you're going to jump off a cliff and fly away. We think that you will accept that there are aerodynamics and that there's thrust and wind and that all of that is perfectly logical and we're sure that if you studied it it would make sense to you but these aren't the questions that you're asking here those questions have already been asked and answered you're asking how to bring abundance to yourself and it's not about aerodynamics it's about asking for something and not getting in the way of it and it's a sort of human thing what you're demonstrating here is not unlike Esther when you get stubborn about something when you want something and it's not coming the normal thing is to explain why this thing I want has not come but all that does is hold you in that place where it does not come and does not come and does not come and does not come we were on the telephone with someone years ago who was talking to us a bit like this. She wanted a crystal ball. She wanted us to just tell her where to go and what to do and where to meet her lover and all of that. And we said, that's not the work we do. Call someone else. We said, we are teachers that you bring it about by your finding the vibrational frequency that allows it in. So we said, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about blue glass. She didn't want to, but we insisted for over a minute. Let's talk about blue glass. Lots of blue glass, different colors of blue glass, different densities of blue glass. We've been on and on and on. She's sighing. <laughs> she didn't want to hear about it. Then let's talk about feathers. She didn't want to talk about feathers. So we talked about feathers, 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 all kinds of feathers, turkey feathers, pigeon feathers, bluebirds feathers, all kinds of feathers, big feathers, little feathers, all kinds of feathers, feathers, hats, feather coats, feather everything. She didn't want to talk about feathers. So then we said, well, then let's talk about butterflies. She didn't want to talk about butterflies. Big butterflies, little butterflies, yellow butterflies, red butterflies. Butterflies that when a butterfly leaves its place, do you know that it migrates? And sometimes it's three or four or five generations that get there finally. The butterfly that left isn't even the butterfly that gets there, but they just keep migrating anyway. In other words, we think that's interesting about butterflies. She didn't think that was interesting about butterflies. <laughs> talking about butterflies 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 we hung up Jerry and Esther are in California and La Jolla on their way to Georgia's for lunch they're walking down the road and Esther says oh let's go in here let's go in here and let's go in here and Jerry says I'm so hungry let's go eat first Esther said, please 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 come in they went in and here was a wall of blue glass blue glass more blue glass than exists anywhere else on the planet in one place a wall of blue glass Esther did not notice that it was what we had talked about because when we're flowing through her it's not like she's aware of it not like that so they saw the blue glass they didn't think much of it they went on they had lunch then they left George's and they went down to the cove walked across this big apron of grass and a flurry of butterflies so intense that they had to close their eyes and stop talking so that they didn't eat them with their mouth and their eyes it was an avalanche of butterflies Esther still wasn't making any association and then Jerry said look at that little boy what's he up to and a little boy had picked a feather up off the ground and was running and handed it to Esther and in the moment that she received the feather she said I cannot believe this Abraham talked about blue glass and butterflies and feathers just an hour ago in that consultation 
And because there's no resistance in our vibration about it, because it was active in our vibration, the universe demonstrated it to us. And that's how it works. That's how it works. That's how it works. That's how it works. It's up to you to show yourself that it will work that way for you. And if it doesn't work that way for you, it's because you're saying, I don't believe in blue glass and I don't think there's any butterflies anywhere in San Diego and I've never seen a feather anywhere around here. In other words, you could talk yourself out of letting the most obvious things in if you're stubborn enough about it. So that's why we say start with things that are easy. Start with things that you know you don't have resistance about. Don't start with trying to change the world or doing big things. Show yourself these things. This is what we wish for you to know. You are seen by source energy and by your inner being. And everything that you desire is known more infinitely than you have ever been able to articulate. It is known, completely known. And it is known, and because it is known, the law of attraction is responding to the knowing of your inner being about all of those things and why you want them. And the gathering of the cooperative components has already taken place. And there is a vortex, vibrational version of everything that you're asking for, whether you're asking for it for yourself or on behalf of someone else. If you could see the vortex version of what's going on on planet Earth today, it would knock your socks off. You just wouldn't believe the intensity with which the billions of you have been and are asking. The potential for creation and for solving those problems and giving you what you're asking for is greater than it has ever been. And it doesn't take that many of you to stop asking the questions of why it doesn't work and accept the physics of why it does work and find a way of feeling the vibrational set point that lets it flow for you. But the only way you're going to do it, you're not going to get it from these words. You're not going to get it from these words. You've got to have a blue glass butterfly and feather experience of your own. You've got to ask for something and see it come. And you've got to felt seen and you've got to felt heard and you've got to felt known and you've got to felt worthy. You've got to feel loved. And when you do, you can be or do or have anything. And stop running around, talking to each other, trying to compare your degrees of worthiness. Who's right and who's wrong? There's nothing of that going on. Everybody gets to create what they want. And this platform is big enough for all of you to get what you want. And not one of you will be able to step on the toes of any of the other of you. It doesn't work that way. You cannot keep others from thriving, only yourself. The power of your asking is the reason for the power of this answering. This was a really strong thing that you're wanting to know and a dovetail with what a whole lot of others are wanting to know. And we've given you the answers and it's not complicated, it's easy. You just feel your way there. But you're right, Abraham, how can I come to trust? Well, you just gotta want to. And then something shows up and you say, oh yeah, I get that. Maybe I can do that again and maybe I can do that again and maybe I can do that again. Until you discover that the universe is responsive to you. Manifestation is responsive to you. Energy flow is responsive to you, but it's coming to you. You're not asserting it. You're not commanding it. You're not demanding it. You are focusing, isolating, accomplishing, and being, and then what you be comes to you. This is a really good time. Thank you. For a segment of refreshment. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next